Cast, where science fiction meets pop culture. We're the podcast that covers everything pop culture and beyond the multiverse. Are you ready to get your geek on? Crank up the DeLorean, warm up the proton packs, toss a coin to your Witcher, and deep dive into your favorite plate of chimichangas. This is Pop X Cast. You are listening to Pop X Cast, where science fiction meets pop culture. Here we go! Pop X Cast. I was born in it, molded by it. Pop X Cast. <laughs> Mr. Stan Lee always welcomes us into our show here each and every week on Pop X Cast. Guys, this is episode 133 coming to you on this November the 7th, 2021. What is up, Team Pop X? Oh my gosh, it's the whole team is assembled here tonight. Hey, it's good. Here. Hello. Hi. My Hi, Joe. Hi, Austin. How you doing? I'm wonderful, man. I'm happy to be here. So good to see you, man. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Are you the key master? I, I just miss you so much. So I, I miss you, you too, man. And our long walks on the beach with powdered sugar and Vaseline. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we I forgot that last time. You remember that? <laughs> you well, did. Let me tell you. We have video those footage. boys have special family vacations. We do. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Let them yes, there's, there's a lot you can do with a 50 gallon drum of hot sauce and Vaseline. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the memories. That's a spicy meatball. Uh, spicy spicy meatball. meatball. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what's up, guys? The chat is already, like, taking off over here. I want to say a huge shout-out. we got John Poffenbarger, Michael Murray. we got Stumbo's Media Outlet here. I believe they might know you, Mr. Burke. Uh, we've got Luke in the house as well as Jeremy Stoltz. What's up, guys? And DC, Hello, what's up, DC? And then Demi Demi was here before anybody. Yeah, uh, at the top of the list, he's just he's ready to go. He's like hashtag first comment. <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> I like. Yeah, that. he he did it. He nailed it. He 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 did good. Thank you, Demi. Appreciate that. So, how have you guys been? I mean, what what's new in your world? I mean, I, we're not we're not going to talk about that thing just yet. But is mm-hmm. is there anything fun going on in this autumn season of the fall season? Finally came to a close. Yes. So oh. I get a day off. <laughs> I know you were a little worried about that. You were like, I don't know if I can make it this weekend. I know. Uh, yeah, we officially, the coach officially said we are done for the the fall season and we will Aww. see everyone next time. Aww. So I'm thrilled to be taking a break from living at the football field. Mama a little months. tired. Mama a little tired. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to have a lot of couch potato time. It will be shifting into other activities, okay. but it will not be outdoor activities, which I am purely thankful for. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I mean, I'm happy that, uh, you know, Ethan got through the season and he's doing yeah, well. They did and great, too. It was an awesome. eight and one season, so they had a great time. Yeah. Awesome. What's new in your world, man, besides that thing we're not going to talk about just yet, mm-hmm. but... Speaking of uh, couch potato, my, my watch every day says, hey, stand up. You haven't stood up in three hours. <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of it's stuff. a Christopher <laughs> Nolan movie. What do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all I've done this week, it feels like, is watch stuff. Uh, a couple of really cool things, man. Uh, 
watched some great movies as of late. I mean, just phenomenal films. Went and uh, got a chance to go rewatch Dune, which was super fun. Watching Ooh. a little Netflix show right now called Cowboy Bebop. Can't say anything about it. But I'm oh, watching. Uh, you know it's so, going to be good. Oh uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to talk about some of this stuff, man. But just uh, my eyes, I've I've really <laughs> started to hurt my eyes. I, I have like this constant strain right now, and I'm like, Ooh. I have to go back to the eye doctor because, and I, I know it's where I've been watching so much stuff, but it's you genuinely anti glare like, coating on your glasses. I, I've even got the little blue light where it blocks <laughs> that out, and that helped, right? But it's it's I watch so much now, it's starting to strain my eyes. So I told oh. Madison. I'm like, I'm going to have to take some some hours off. You're going to have to have like, some, yeah, some mandatory yeah. eye breaks. Yeah, does, yeah, your, yeah. does your eyelid start twitching? Because mine does when I watch it. Like when I game a long time, yeah. like my yeah. eyelid will just start twitching. I'm yeah, like, it's, yeah. It's, um, it's weird. I have this pain in, in the back. It almost feels like it's starting a migraine, but it's strain. <laughs> and I know oh it's just gosh. from watching so much, which is crazy to me that yeah. that could come. But that's just kind of... That's kind of where I'm at right now. So I, I, my I husband to... would always have his eyes would water when he played too long because his eyes were yeah. tired and he well, would yeah. just like tough through it. But the thing <laughs> is, you, when you're when, when you're like, playing games or you're watching a movie, <laughs> a, sometimes especially if it's a movie that's got a lot of like cinematography in it, stuff oh, in yeah. it. you don't blink. Oh, yeah. You don't realize no. this, but you don't blink. Absolutely. And when you don't blink, your eyes dry out and it starts watering and you get mm-hmm. irritated. A moist environment. But according to Jeremy Stoltz over in the chat, he's been hashtag Animal Crossing it all weekend. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That new, their new update dropped on Friday, I believe. It actually released earlier on the 3rd. Oh. And they surprised Ooh. us. Um, but yeah, I broke that out on, the, on Friday the 5th. Yep. And dove right in. And, I and saw my wife. She was hanging out with Brewster today and, and hey, getting yeah. getting serenaded by Mr. Toady Doty, whatever his name is. <laughs> Captain. I, have, I, I know. Yeah, he's sure. He's a specially confused right. animal. Yeah, he doesn't confused. know whether he's a turtle or a frog, but he does sing beautifully like and drive a ship straight. So that's wow. all I need. I've been playing Call of Duty Vanguard all weekend. Vanguard Ooh. came oh, out on Friday, and I got the PlayStation 5, and I got a, a beautiful yeah. 4K 120 hertz monitor screen. Yes. This thing is freaking baller. I'm not lying to you. It could be one of the best visual Call of Duty games I've ever seen. Um, I've heard it's pretty. It's pretty. It's okay. a pretty game. I ain't going to lie to you. But, um, pretty but Beautiful we... views and you get to go pew pew. It sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> Beautiful views with my pew pew. Oh my gosh. Well, guys. Death and destruction galore. You ready for, you get this thing kicked off on the right foot? You ready to Absolutely. do it? All Let's right, go. Austin. It's all you, man. It's me, hey. Hey, guys. Welcome to Pop X, where science fiction meets pop culture. I'm Austin Burke, the Appalachian geek at heart. We would like to welcome everyone to join us live in the PopX.live chat room. Come hang out with us and join the conversation at PopXCast.com. If this is your first time tuning into PopX, first of all, what are you doing? Subscribe. Stay here. Don't ever leave. Uh, but second of all, uh, the first 15 minutes or so, we run down the headlines since our last show. Then we dive into all things nostalgic on the retro rewind and at the halfway point we hit on the show's topic and today's topic seems to be one dividing audiences everywhere right so down the daggone be, middle yeah, man yeah, that's gonna be interesting <laughs> and i'm joseph burke Cecil florida season comic book nerd and retro enthusiast and i'd like to welcome everybody joining us right now over on the pop live streams and also want to invite you over to the creative multiverse where we're gearing up for january and if you know what january means it is art Uary season, so it's a 31-day prompt challenge starting on January the 1st. Details will be launching on December the 1st, as we will be teasing words coming forth on art Uary, the we'll third annual art Uary. But uh, be joining us, and if you want to get involved on that, and you want to draw with us, and you want to hang out with us, you're more than welcome to. To get started, get on uh, Facebook groups, search the Creative Multiverse, and come join us, and we will add you to the list, all right? All right. Sounds great. Like You're That's good. Excellent. Yep. Lindsay. Um, well, the last episode, since you just said that this week's is 133. Last episode, 132. I see what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually uh, broke down, dissected, stuck it back all together with scotch tape. The series What If on Disney Plus. We uh, broke that all down. And um, talked about that all through the day. And then we rewound a fun little ditty called Little Shop of Horrors, mm-hmm. which was a fantastic good time. If you want to go check out what we had to say about all of those things, make sure you go over to our official website, popxcast.com. 
and you can also check out all of our other past shows and episodes mm. from the Pulpex Collective Archive as mm, well. Yeah. Yes, yes. And as Austin said before, if you're here and you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, it needs to happen. Yeah. Now is the time. It's it's time. Slam the button, slam the bell, slam all the things to make it go dingling. You know, you need to be here. <laughs> We'll let you know when we go live next if you're here. She you said slam and ding a ling in the same Slam show. that ding a ling bell. Fuck you, Joe. Ah, ding a ling. Anyways, anyway. um, <laughs> wow. Podcast friends, po the people that like to listen to us in the formats of podcasting, we are also in the audio world. Make sure that if you're enjoying our content, that you please give us a lovely five star rating and review. Show us your love. We sure, surely do appreciate all of the good things. We do. And I'm uh, doing a Mr. Miyagi right now. I have no idea why. All Bye right, guys. Gone. With all of that Bye said, gone. we will be right back. Pop Bye X gone. News coming your way. Don't go anywhere. Extra, extra. Read all about it. This is Pop X News coming to you live right here on PopXCast.com. Well... That thing I said that we ain't going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about now. Awesome Burke. Blow the lid off of that sucker. It is with great honor, deepest pride and sympathies, not sympathies, but salutations and complications and all this wonderful stuff that accolades 100,000 subscribers on YouTube this week. 100,000 subs eyeballs. on YouTube. Yeah, man. Dude. Uh, pairs, pairs of eyeballs, even. <laughs> <laughs> that's two hundred thousand. That's two hundred thousand eyeballs. I laugh. Total. Do you know what's funny, Austin? Yeah. I was going through my screenshots the other day because I had <laughs> before I started working on your on your logos. This was in phase one. I had a screenshot of your YouTube channel at thirty thousand. Oh, that's, that's a millennium. This was ago. this was this, like. this this is when you had the green Austin mm. Burke. Ooh. Nice. Back in the day, and I was just what like, "What was the date on that sucker?" You know what? That's a really good Do you question. Recall? Let me let me see if I can recall. But it was just so cool going back. That's and just so exciting. Singing. How does it feel to hit that benchmark? How does that feel? I know Austin? it's been kind of like your lifelong dream to make this a success, and now you're reaching these huge milestones. Yeah. How does it feel, man? Seriously. It feels, it, oh it, my it, God! I found it. What was it? Holy! <laughs> let him answer the. Let him answer I'm, the I'm sorry, question. Sorry, I, I, I got excited. What was the date? I'm I'm curious. What was the date, Joe? I'm, I'm looking now. I'm looking now. Hold on. Uh, the I'm date is. Dur, 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 dur. Keep talking. I got you. Well, I I feel like, well, it, it feels like I've been doing it a lot longer than I have. I mean, really, I started going full on into this in 2017. So I guess it's about four to five years. Yeah. Kind of focusing on this, and then once I quit my uh, government job, I really. Got to focus yeah, on that. Yeah, that was that was like, a big moment. I remember when that happened. Yeah, because it's like college done, government job done. It's like, what do I have now? Well, I have this, well, and my wife and my dog. Uh, but I have this. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this, this is, is you, my man. Full. So I was able to go. It feels like fifty to a hundred quicker than I went from thirty to fifty, just so because I could. You had the sit time back invested and, in yeah, it. Focus yeah. on. So if our audiences is looking right now at the screen. Uh, you're seeing Austin's channel at 31,569 subscribers. This snapshot was taken sometime around July 2018. Austin, this is right wow. when you this is when you visited me that summer by yourself. Oh, wow. And we went to see Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh wow, he looks like he's trapped in the Matrix. Look at that. Oh, and I remember that. Thumbnail. It's it's funny too. I remember that uh, Toy Story four movie review. It got four point eight, and at the time that was huge for me. Um, which you know four point eight now that, is still dude. really good, but that oh, was the, one the of views, the most yeah. yeah that was one of the most viewed movie reviews I had ever had at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean that was still like trying to figure out what my channel was, and that I think that was around when I started to do the Netflix stuff too, which yeah. is what really got my channel going. Yeah. Oh yeah, the live streaming stuff for sure. Yeah, Catapulted absolutely. You. Yeah, absolutely. Which I am still. Hopefully tomorrow is when I do my 100K live stream where I debut my new graphics. So, Joe, you're going to be a little part of that. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, a big, uh, an awesome gift that my brother got me uh, for reaching 100,000. And then Ooh. hopefully uh, I, YouTube reaches out to me and I get my um, my little plaque that yeah. I get to unbox. A little silver play button. A little silver play button, right? 
that's kind of where I'm uh, looking. But I, I, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. I'm happy. I love it. I, I love the community. It's, it's a hundred thousand. I'm sure not all of them are great, but I think most of them uh, are, are phenomenal people. So I, I just appreciate uh, every last one of them who, you know, take well, the time. We thank you so much, man. I remember when you first started here on PopX Cast. It was in 2016. Wow. Uh, you started, oh um, and it was just, it's been awesome. You've been on, you were in college dorms, dude, do, doing this show it's with true. us. It's true, and the, and the Wi-Fi was The Wi-Fi busted. was horrible, and you were trying boy. your best to work through it, and oh boy, here yeah. you are, man, five years later, it's kicking butt. It's been really butt. cool to watch you, uh, your journey from growth, from life events, just this whole stage <laughs> of your life has just been really cool to watch It has been. Come, come along. It's been really cool. Congrats, but, dude. Well, with all that you. said, man, from all of us here at PopX Cast, thank you, man for so for hundred thousand that's awesome and all the people out there watching please if you're not subscribed go subscribe to his channel it's Absolutely. amazing and um Thank we're, we're so very next blessed goal. what's your do you have a next goal because you know you just can't stop there yeah i i, I want to hit 150 faster than it took me from 50 to 100 so i'm i'm hoping we can we can keep pushing and i'm already at uh i i think i'm at a hundred I'm I'm 500 over 100,000. That's the best way to say it. So okay. I've I've been growing a little little quicker the last week. So hopefully Good. we can keep that uh, momentum well, momentum going. Let's keep this guy Absolutely. snowballing up to his goals. I love it. Austin Thank Burke you. upward and onward 100k. All right. Hey. So continuing on with the news this week. Uh, in late August, Marvel Studios spokespersons acknowledged that La Latita Wright sustained minor injuries while filming on this uh, stunt for the Black Panther film Wakanda Forever. Now, at the time, Marvel appeared to indicate that this wouldn't affect the film's production. However, Wright's quote-unquote minor injuries are now going to cause the Black Panther sequel to go on hiatus. Oh. So, via The Hollywood Reporter, Wakanda Forever will halt production due to the severity of the injury sustained by Latita Wrights. Uh, whatever it is, they're not even mentioning it, but evidently yeah. it was worse than they thought it was, and she's going to have to take a longer healing period to come back from that. Uh, so, production was able to continue following after two months following Wright's injury, but this shutdown will begin officially Thanksgiving week and uh, filming will is likely to resume sometime yes. early 2022. Oh. So a little delay in the world of Wakanda. What are your thoughts on that, guys? Uh, of course, we want to wish uh, right, uh, Latita Wright's uh, yeah. health and safety, obviously, first and foremost. But uh, just hate to hear that. You know, just anytime an actor or somebody gets injured on on a set you know you're getting alec baldwin vibe you're like oh my gosh what's going oh. on oh gosh that yeah. was such, and i think that happened between the last episode and this episode it did yeah like, oh it my did. gosh that so was such tragic. a sad sad but moment. uh yeah i mean it, it, it i feel bad for you know all the people that's invested in the production of wakanda forever uh because of this injury and evidently it must have been more severe than initially thought uh, a couple of weeks ago and yeah. she's going to have to take some long, longer time. But uh, the fact she's doing her own stunts is is interesting in this film. Uh, yes. For to say the most. Austin, you got anything to add on that? Yeah. Well, it, it's already a movie that you know, not having Chadwick Boseman for a Black Panther film, they're already having to kind of, uh, I guess, rework that whole side of the Marvel universe. So right. I, I feel like Wright's going to be a major part of that now that she's injured. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be a mix, right? It's not just going to be her. It's going to be a little bit of Mbaku, going to be a little bit of Riot, going to be right. a little bit of, I mean, there's still those Michael B. Jordan rumors. And I'm like, uh, Killmonger, could he maybe be back? We don't know. But uh, I'm very curious to see what they do with this movie. I also like the, uh, I believe this is the film that Ironheart is rumored to pop up in, right? I, I, I believe so, yes. Yeah, so her I, and I'm Shuri curious. are working some things out. Yeah, yeah, this could be this could be interesting, but I hope they get going on it because I want to see it, man. I want to well, see how they do it uh, and and how they go about, um, you know, kind of ending that chapter of Bozeman's Black Panther because you know there's going to be a, a great scene with that. Doesn't well, Wakanda have that regenerating pool? Uh, yes, the they do. Well, yeah, I mean, who's to say that Killmonger can't come back? Whatever. You know, <laughs> it's true. So. Yeah. Anything's possible, Lindsay. You but had I something. To add? I mean, even outside of the uh, the Black Panther storyline um, and how that may or may not change, but anything that happens in any Marvel movie mm -hmm. affects everything else after. <laughs> true. <laughs> so Very true. it could affect how and when a character is introduced. It could affect how a storyline maybe shifted a little bit. It's it's really. Um, 
we're creating variants right now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Deviants. With the, with the delay <laughs> of yeah. um, movies being produced, just like Black Widow experienced, and we had to, to shift the storytelling of the um, uh, Captain America and Winter Soldier had to introduce a character in a different way yeah. because she showed up in that movie and it was supposed to be the movie first and then the series right. and it ended up being flip flops. So they right. had to kind of do some last minute shift around. So you never know what you're going to get with Marvel whenever they know. have to, to ebb and flow with, unpredicted situations like this like pandemics or Very injuries true. or anything like that so mm -hmm. the stories will still be told in their in their um glory it just might be a little bit different than they originally planned yeah That's couldn't I agree know. couldn't agree better well said Lindsay. yeah um well austin what do you got for us this week i've got some stuff also i did just get a little notification on my phone saying uh tonight could we could see the release of the spider-man no way home poster <gasps> the very Ooh. first one Cool. Yeah, so it could oh. be during the show. It could be after the show. We will see. Keep we'll your eyeballs see. on the net. It'll be before midnight. Yes. It'll be before midnight for sure. So. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Stay tuned to Twitter and everything, guys, because it could be dropping. But we're going to go from Spider-Man to Eternals and talk about the cinema score. So Eternals has a cinema score, and it's the lowest for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thor was the previous record holder uh, with a B+. Plus. A little shocking to me. However, this is a curious moment where some of these numbers aren't adding up. Eternals might have this distinction along with the constant chatter about its Rotten Tomatoes score, uh, but it's also cruising toward the chance of having the best international box office of the year for Marvel. Pair that with the fact that its opening in the United States has been strong when compared to other releases, and it's a bit confusing to cut through the noise. Theater goers have enjoyed the movie, but there hasn't been the thunderous crash online that usually accompanies these films. Uh, give it a couple of days to settle, more people see it, right? Uh, but still, this movie was billed to be the most unique thing to come out of the MCU, and it's living up to that charge in numerous strange ways. Cast members last night on SNL slammed the movie, stating... Don't go see it. It's rotten, <laughs> said the tomatoes. Why is this film, Lindsay, I'll start with you. Why, why is this film so divisive? Um, mm. Well, you're dealing with characters that are unknown. Sure. And yeah, that's a the good, trailer kind of gives you a little bit of a taste, but it's not a overpopularized group of heroes-ish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and also you're not tying into that same storyline that we've been eating off of for a decade, like we were the other stories. Um, yeah. you don't have the Avengers tie in, I think is really what's kind of killing none this of the heavy hitters the other yeah. stories are getting. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's, it's, it's a new thing. It's it's not something that's been um, over sensitized or over, over sensationalized. Excuse me, over sensationalized for several years. It's it's also um, even the comic books themselves. Yeah. I don't believe were nearly as popular as the other MCU stories that we've been ingesting right. for a while. So I don't. I'm, it's not surprising to me that it's getting mixed reviews out yeah. the gate. Hopefully it changes. Well, and and it's not a comedy like Guardians of the Galaxy, no, right? Unfamiliar it's a little, characters. it's a little, it's I wouldn't say dark. It's not like horror yeah. or anything weird, but it's yeah. not upbeat and peppy like a, a Thor Ragnarok or anything like that or the mm. Guardians. It's not a funny comedy. It it's more definitely deep more dramatic. Yeah, there's a little love story in there. So I mean, there yeah. it's a little bit of a taste. There's action, but there's not nearly yeah. as much action as the other ones as well. So I mean, it's it's really going to be about what 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 is it that you want from a comic book movie and does that serve that purpose for you sure. yeah i think for me it felt like you know it almost felt like a marvel reset in a way yeah. because you think about all the characters that we're used to and this is marvel's way of kind of resetting the script be like mm -hmm. well you know it's all of this but have we told you about this yeah, and mm -hmm. um, and, and there was a lot there too. There is a lot to digest for that sure. A, a lot of people don't have a backstory on, so that might have been kind of and a turn off as well. It, it, I want to dive more into that. We're going to. We're going though. to. We're going to. We're going to stop right there because this this, this question can we I can, can easily just fill out the rest of the hour with yeah we can all begin, of that. But I can understand why it's divisive. People are going yeah. in yes, expecting definitely. one thing. They're expecting the 
you know, the 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 James Gunn, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Russo Han, brothers Han. style, and they're they're seeing all of this and the heroes and Hulk and, and right. Ruffalo, and they're given this whole new set of characters that nobody knows anything about. Correct. Yeah, and, and Zhao is a she's an ind- she won the Oscar last year. She's a very independent style filmmaker. So just her style is so distinct. For the she came out and said Man of Steel was her movie that she looked at before making this movie and it makes all the sense in the world to me it's that darkness that same kind of storyline just with a lot of characters so i I could see that yeah interesting what do you guys Mm -hmm. think of the you know we're going to be talking about this later in the show but what do you think about the divisiveness of the Mm -hmm. eternals and why do you think that is drop us a comment in the chat below we'll come back and we'll retouch on those here in a little bit finish up with the news yeah uh do you want to move on to next yes please all right um earlier this week it was revealed by one of the producers of the film that dune part two is beginning filming july 18th 2022 that's just like right out the gate right out the gate man casting for the sequel should begin soon and pre-production will begin as early as march the sequel has been confirmed by the studio and is slated to release October 2023. That is fast. Have you had a chance a to see Dune yet, Lindsay? Yes. It felt so much like Star Wars meets Tolkien meets Marvel. Uh, it was just There was a oh, lot of So good. What the f- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There was a lot of that that happens during that for me. Yeah. And um, I I tried to watch the original because you guys know this is a uh, remake. The original you can't even come. Yeah. Well, it's actually. The original one is like, it's cringy. Well, it actually is all derived from a novel first. The, yes. There was a novel that was written uh, several decades ago. I've read half of it. And um, Yeah, there, there's a whole lot of what the heck <laughs> going well. on in that movie. And I was like, okay, well, and then you, it leaves you on this huge cliffhanger because I believe yeah. it's intended to be a trilogy, if I it remember is. correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're not even going to get the full closure of the story <laughs> in not 2023. Yet. We're going to have to wait until the third part comes out. So hopefully it still continues to be successful to finish the story. But... What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lindsay, I, I get that though. I mean, a lot of these characters oh, and stories. It was, it was great, but it was just. It's a lost. rated R version of an Avengers story that never was. Essentially, I mean, you're seeing, you're seeing bits of actors. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you saw bits. You know those bits. There's there were bits. There were bits and pieces. I know it was great. <laughs> But I think I think for me though the cinematography the overall color tones it was of this of this film well done. I, I I could even though I have HBO Max <clears throat> thank you very much uh, even though I have HBO Max and I'm able to see this at home this this right here required me to go see it in the cinema yeah. Yeah. I wanted the the surround sound and the sound of the sandworms going through the sand mm-hmm. I needed that I, I didn't Luke Luke in the chat asks if it was really different than the original movie and I want to say yes oh, yeah. yeah it was Vastly. significantly different than the first one Vastly it was much more different. beautiful and easier on the eyes even though the story itself that they're telling is a little wonky to follow if you don't have any context but sure. um the, the the cinematography is gorgeous and yeah. I would say go watch it just for that it's I, like I, I, go ahead it's like Star Wars meets Blade Runner yeah, yeah, very exactly. much. Like, well, and it's and it's Denis who directed Blade Runner. I know it is. But it's like it, it's like I, I saw it in New York. You know, good theater. It, it was solid, right? Then I saw it again, and then I saw it in IMAX for a third time, and it was just it's it's completely oh different, right? My a thoughts, sandworm in the IMAX. Oh, oh my god, it was that incredible, was and it's. My thoughts on the movie didn't change. Like I still love it the same, and and still had like my one or two minor issues. But the experience in mm. IMAX was just, and you oh actually get more God. screen. You get to see more of what Denis intended as a director. So I mean, it's just if it's That's still great. in IMAX or RPX or Cinemark, just go see it yeah. on the biggest screen box. You wouldn't believe how much been... extra the, that little bit on top oh, yeah. and bottom would add to more the overall. More ships in yeah. the big battle aspects scenes. ratios. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Wow. All righty, we got one more news segment, and we're going to wrap this up, and we're going to go right on into the retro rewind. Tony Stark himself has landed the first major role since sacrificed himself in the Avengers Endgame. Uh, mm-hmm. The assembled for he's assembled for the ensemble for Christopher Nolan's next film, 
Oppenheimer uh, keeps growing in star power as sources tell Deadline Matt Damon and Robert Downey Jr. in talks to join Killian Murphy. Oh my God, Killian Murphy. <laughs> Freaking, oh my God. <laughs> I love Killian Murphy. Yeah, me too. Oh my gosh. What's that show he's on? Um, uh, 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 yeah. Peaky Blinders. The Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. The Peaky <laughs> Freaking <laughs> Blinders. God, I love it. In the oh universe. <laughs> we just totally went on another world. Uh, in the Universal <laughs> Pictures uh, tent pole. Now, Deadline previously reported that Emily Blunt is also in talks to join the cast. So Daddy Nolan Bullings. is writing and directing the film. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys are all the rest. Peaky blinders. Peaky blinders. Oh my gosh. This is Nolan is writing and directing the film that revolves around J. Robert Oppenheimer, the scientist who ran the Manhattan Project that led to the invention of the atomic bomb. Um, wait, Nolan is writing a movie about the A-bomb with a cast that's unreal. Dude. And the Peaky Blonde. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be great. This oh is. My God. I, I Mary mean, Poppins on top of it. Heck yes. Let's you go. Talk about, I wish. You talk about the uh, most stacked casts. And this is just the first four. This is just the first. Did you just realize? Did we just, <laughs> Shut up. Did we just. Sorry. You talk about the most stacked casts. I, I, this may be the most, right? And you don't know who else. You know he's gonna get, uh, well, Alfred from Batman, Michael Caine. You know he's gonna Michael get Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Every, just say say <laughs> Michael. I got my knickers in a bunch. Say Mr. Michael Caine. <laughs> Michael Caine. And Michael, it sounds like Michael, Michael Caine. Caine. <laughs> Michael Caine. But you know he's well. gonna keep adding on to this, and it's going to be incredible. I can't wait for this movie. It looks I can't incredible. either. What is it with directors and like having their like favorite acting child that they carry through all their titles? Yeah, we were just yeah. talking about that pre-show. Oh my gosh, that's so. Didn't funny. I see and an Gillian. article recently that saying that Michael Caine is officially retiring from acting? Yeah, that was fake. Uh, Don't he they came, say that he came after every that was big wrong. movie they're done? I started to say why he's he is like he's he's not even peach yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! They're still going, it's gonna be man. One of them. It's gonna be one of them episodes. Okay. We're there. He'll be a hundred and one years old. <laughs> He's not even peaked yet. Mister Wayne, fuck okay. <laughs> what is? What in the hell's happened? My, to my favorite one was when he's crying. He goes, I failed you. <laughs> I failed you. And then at the, the cemetery in the background, and he's got that face like he's always constipated. <laughs> I failed you, my, my failed Anyway, you. my favorite. Wow. And see, there we go. Right. All oh, right. So that was news this week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sweating now. Um, that was a workout. I'm I'm sweating. You guys ready for a little retro rewind? Please? Yeah! Okay, let's do it. Slime me, baby. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my. Don't ask me of those things. <laughs> Ow! I like it when you slime me. <laughs> Holy cow. Retro Rewind, we are back. Pop X has literally went off the freaking rails tonight. We're gone. Uh, so we're talking Ghostbusters 2, 1989, the whole cast comes back. We're talking Annie Potts, Rick Moranis, the whole ensemble, and I don't know, man, This the fence is, is very divisive on this. There's a lot of fans that yeah. like one more than two. There's uh -huh. a lot of people that like two more than one. Yeah. And um, for me, for me, it's split right down the middle, 50-50. Oh, you can't have God. one without I the other. I have a favorite. You do have a favorite? I do. Okay. For me, it's, it's th this one, though, is like, I remember watching the original Ghostbusters as a kid, and I didn't own the movie as a kid. My dad rented it from the local video rental store. Mm -hmm. But when 1989 came out, at the time, my mom was working at Hardee's. You guys know Hardee's. That's, uh, that's a fast food joint. That's Kyle's Junior you. now. And Hardee's had a complete deal with the Ghostbusters 2. That you, they had these little audio things and little toys that you would get in that little 
children's meal. Ooh, okay. And as a promotional gift, some of the some of the workers got complimentary VHS copies of the film. Ooh. My mom got me a free copy of Ghostbusters 2 when it came out on home release. That's so awesome. Here's, I tell you all of that to say this. So I didn't own the first one, but me being a kid of the 80s, this is the one I watched over and over. Okay. 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 So all the scenes are so like etched into my brain, and there's a lot of feel-good moments here for me. When trying to get the band back together, trying to get Winston back, and trying to get uh, you know Bill Murray's character yeah. back, and and Vankman and all of them, uh, and then you know you've got uh, Egon, uh, just everybody trying to get the whole band back together essentially to fight this this river of slime <laughs> that is uh, flowing underneath Manhattan. And uh, I just thought this was this movie is charming. It's got all the essence of part one, and it's just amplified in part two. Mm-hmm. We gave him some French bed pizza. He passed right out. And so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just those moments. That's Sigourney Weaver. Can't forget her. Yeah. But uh, this one, I wanted to tell, I just wanted to share that story, how my mom literally was one of the catalysts to help me, like, have this childhood memory of watching this movie over and over as a kid. Oh. But I want to, I want to go to Lindsay. Okay. Lindsay, what did you think about this movie? All right. Well, um, I adore Ghostbusters as a franchise in general. It just has all the good feels attached to it. It's not super scary, but you're still dealing with ghosts. Um, all of the great comedians of that time kind of came together and, and, and made this glorious little little show. And so I fell in love with it with the first one, but I feel like the second movie just leveled up everything mm-hmm. okay the the ghostbusters house was totally overhauled and leveled up so there wasn't like crap falling off the walls and it wasn't like this janky place it was actually like a legit facility Business. for them yep. to work out of the the um the ambulance or not the ambulance but the hearse the, the ghostbuster mobile yeah. ecto it had freaking like led lighting and all the gear was all like snazzy and i mean it was it was like a, a legit like emergency vehicle that was recognized by the city is like a thing you pull over for you know that sort of thing uh the jokes hit harder you know yeah. like the the construction scene whenever they're digging a hole in first avenue and in and Bill Murray's like doing the, the jersey, like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you trying doing? Trying to talk with talk with the cops and convince them that they're supposed to be there and that sort of thing. That was hilarious. So- <laughs> Sorry, I had to. There's I mean, even the ghosts, I don't feel like we saw as many ghosts mm. as we did the first one. Well, there was the, the Titanic. That we did see. Mm. This is true. We did see the, <laughs> the Titanic, Titanic freaking the- yeah. <laughs> we did land the Titanic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but we got to see Slimer several times in the mm-hmm. scene. We got yeah. to um, experience the bad guy. Uh, what was his name? Prince Vigor. Yes, Vigor. Uh, so <laughs> he, he was he was always creepy as usual. And then you know we of course you have to bring in some cuteness factor with the baby. The mm-hmm. baby. The baby. Yeah. Which was a twin. They were twins. Yes, and they they do show oh. that at the end of the movie, which I was like, oh my god, I totally forgot it was a twin. Yeah. Anyways, but I, I just feel like the relationships were more solid. The storyline flowed a little bit easier, even though it was really nice in the first one. I just feel mm-hmm. like there was more chemistry that was sewn together a little tighter than it was. They were the expanding so I, on what was already there. Yeah. And they just took it they took it over the top. Yeah. I mean, even like the commercials on the TV were even leveled up better. I just it takes all the good feels from the first one and just amplifies it times yeah, 10 so I that agree. one has to be my favorite one austin burke what's your thoughts on uh, ghostbusters 2 i like the first one more okay i'll say that I, I think the first one has more magic i like the simplicity of it the sequel it it goes bigger and at times it goes better i think Lindsay talked about the uh the, the humor in this one works extremely well and i also like there's something about watching this in 2021 right that you know how the negative attitudes the the slime kind of feeds off of that and then at the end you kind of have everybody coming together and uh, increasing everyone's mood through the statue of liberty like uh, like all of this applying it to today when everybody's like so sad we're all going through so many things right now it's triggered 
<laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of how I felt when I watched the new Bill and Ted movie, how everybody comes together at the end. They're celebrating like, you mm -hmm. know, I, I like the unity. I like the the fact that people are rallying around the Ghostbusters. And then while wow, the credits are playing, they're getting the key to the city, like all this awesome stuff. Yes. Um, so I, I found this to be a really entertaining. I found this to be a watch that made me happy mm. more so Definitely. than I actually like love the story. I think the story suffers a little bit from going a bit overboard with believability and not that, you know, Ghostbusters is something that you buy a lot in the first place, but I think the first movie does a good job of kind of keeping that grounded. Right. Uh, but the second one, in my opinion, I, I think there's just a lot to it. And the effects are solid. They're not the best I've ever seen, but there's a lot to it to where I kind of had to switch off my brain a bit too often, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, yeah. Even though, again, it's it's still kind of impressive for the time. But I just, I had a smile on my face the entire time because, like you said, Joe, getting the band back together. Yeah. I love when a movie can do that. I love when, yeah. you know, you, you go here and, you, and and at the end you have this the culmination of kind of everything. And um, I'll say this one's more epic if that's if that's the right word to use than oh, the first, yes. even, even though the the third act in the first Ghostbusters I think is is awesome in its own right, but this one especially the end when you have literally everyone kind of gathered around, I think it's um, I, it just goes bigger. They yeah. drive the freaking Liberty. You know, yeah, the Statue it, of Liberty is literally walking. And I'll be <laughs> honest, amazing. I'll be honest, that's one case where the effects were not. For some reason, I remember that being not the best looking when the Statue of Liberty is kind of walking through the streets. Of it, it's kind of awkward. Yeah. It, it they use, like it's not bad. They use the same technology. They put a guy in a suit, and they use the same te miniature yeah. technology as they did with the Stay Puft marshmallow. But it looks better than I remember. When, I, there is one scene that's so cheesy. Like when, when the Statue of Liberty breaks the glass on top of the museum. Oh, yeah. It's like, and the, the Statue of Liberty yeah. is literally just pasted, like just looking straight down. That's yeah. so unrealistic. Like, yeah. you know, there's no angle or depth. And I understand, you know, you, you can only do, you, you didn't have CGI. I can overlook yeah. so. that stuff, though, because, I mean, it's just so epic the, to try to imagine even pulling that feat off. It's just like, yeah. okay, guys, I'll give you that one. Yeah. yeah and the fact, the, story that they was even, told. the fact that they even tried to give us the Statue of Liberty kind of walking through New York, like, was that's cool, such an right? ambitious, you know, like, what mind, and we know what mind came up with it, but the, creativity you have to have yeah. to come up with the plot of this movie is something else which is why i'm because they're keeping it in the family with ghostbusters afterlife which is why i'm super excited uh to see what they do in the new one but i i think this movie is while i don't enjoy it as much as the first i think the creativity is just kind of flowing i kind of hope you know we have a we had a giant figure in one and a we giant have. walking figure in two yeah yeah, yeah. i hope, I hope so. that they keep on with that and just keep the keep it going you know the continuity of it's yeah. just it's the climactic moment when you see this giant thing walking down the street or whatever yeah. you know but I'm there just was saying. one thing that i picked up and i and i hope that they carry it or at least mention it somehow into this third movie mm -hmm. egon at the beginning whenever he was doing the testing with the married couple that they thought they were doing therapy and they were in the waiting room and they were fighting with each other behind the glass <laughs> Tim <And> Conrad. <laughs> yeah. And you guys, um, he was talking to, it was Egon and Ray, I believe, where I'm in conversation. And he said, my parents never gave us toys when we were little because we always had to do work or whatever. Right. And I was like, yeah. I'm going to remember that line yeah. because I know <laughs> that we're going to go to his house in the third movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if anything's going to come of that as a reference or see. anything. Yeah. But I was like, that is a direct pool that definitely could be taken into the, the third, third movie, movie as, as, as a reference, reference. so yeah. we'll see squeeze some new year's juice from you big apple <laughs> you know me, you're so come on then i'm gonna get tagged for this on youtube but i don't give a damn come on <laughs> I mean, so good. that scene is so good, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> it is so I fun. I love it. Yeah. All right, so let's score it right quick. Okay. Lindsay Badger. Uh, I'm going to go with 85. Nice. 85%. 8. 85%. 5. Austin Burke. I'm lower. I'm, I'm going to 62. I, I hate to be the negative, but no, I, I do think it is. And if they feed off of this movie in the next one, like Lindsay said, I, I, I really think it could be something special. 
I am going to go with the same score as the year it was re- released, 89%. Wow. Nice. Wow. Very I, I, good. Uh, just because, and the only reason I'm rating it that high is because there's a lot of feel good moments and happy moments in my own childhood. Yes. With, with my mother and all that she went through to get, you know, everything that she got for me. Yeah. So that's, you know, there's a lot of emotional attachment to that. We have, we have a lot of uh, comments in the chat saying that they kind of prefer the first one over the second. I one. see that. Yeah. So, uh, you well, guys, <clears throat> I, I may be in the minority and also Joe, I'm kind of glad you're on team two. Well, I mean, Team sequel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> but it, 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 I mean, they're both great movies. You can't hate I'm one 50, over the other. I'm 50 50, man. I'm 50, I, 50. I absolutely love both of them. Uh, but uh, two, I think, out wins for my opinion. Oh, I gotcha. think we can all agree they're both better than the Melissa McCarthy one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> With so that bad. said, are you guys ready oh. to talk Eternals? Let's- yeah. Let's All right, it. we're going to roll the spoiler we alert warning. If you've not Eternal. seen Eternals beyond this point, you have been warned. So you might want to hit the pause button, come back, and uh, enjoy Pop X at a later date. We'll be right back. Danger, danger. You are about to enter a Pop, Pop X spoiler alert. Beyond this point, there is no return. You have been warned. You have been warned. And so Eternals, we talked about this in the news uh, very briefly and very quickly, but there is a lot of divisiveness centered around this movie. Did we give the actual uh, weekend accumulations uh, money? Uh, I think 71 was the number. 71 is that? 71 domestically. 71 domestically. So, okay. So it made 71, which is, is, that's not the biggest uh, uh, no, it, no. Uh, it did less than, than Shang-Chi and Black Widow domestically, but I believe the international total was more. Yeah. Eternals it wasn't there some movies. markets that it wasn't allowed to be played? There are some mm-hmm. markets that because yeah. of a certain scenes that were added and kept in, Disney did not want to lessen the integrity of its film. Yes. Good for Disney, as a matter yeah. of fact, for not Fair wanting enough. to change their craft. Um, but uh, there's we talked about this really early on is... A lot of audiences are going in thinking that the Eternals may, you know, be be fighting alongside their famous heroes, or there'll be cameos of Nick Fury or something like that. There's some kind of continuity. That yeah, will, there was no there none nothing. whatsoever. And so, the Eternals. I'm going to give you a little history backstory. Okay, Jack mm. Kirby, one of the original artists from Marvel Comics, who worked with Stan Lee to create the Fantastic Four. The X-Men, he's the artist that came up with these. At a certain time, he had some discrepancies with Marvel around, I want to say, the early 60s. Right after he did X-Men, he left and went to DC. Mm. All right, and so Jack worked with DC for a long time, and he invented some heavy hitter characters over there as well that are still big time. If you just Google it, I ain't going to dive down that rabbit hole. But at some point, Jack Kirby was swayed to come back to Marvel. And it was promised to him that if you come back, we're going to give you your own book and you can write your own series and do your own thing artistically. Not only can you write it, you can illustrate it as well. So was The Eternals born. And basically, up until this point, the origins of Marvel had never been revealed. There had never been a backstory to the Celestials, the Eternals, and the One Above All. We haven't gotten there yet, but if you know what, your comic what year books, roughly was this? I want to say '64. I, I honestly, I don't, I can't remember when the Eternals originally came out. Uh, maybe it may be '70s. I can't remember. Um, but uh, anyway. Uh, he was kind of promised to be able to, to write these books. It's like, you come back and work for us because, I mean, he is such a heavy hitter. Um, he, he, that was when he was promised to come back and start doing that. And uh, let me just let me make sure on this right quick. I want to make Eternals sure. Eternals number one, July 76. 1976. Yeah, so, um, so there you go. Uh, right after the 60s, right after the X-Men comics and everything, X-Men were still going good with Marvel. Uh, and he had left, went to D.C., come back, and he wrote this. And we haven't gotten there yet, but I mentioned The One Above All. Mm. The One Above All is the equivalent to God. And we haven't... <laughs> the the Red Celestial, Ephraim, Ephraimos, or whatever his name is in this yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. 
uh, something. He's got a funny name. He's depicted as God, but yeah. even he as a celestial answers to the one above all who calls all the shots. And um, very interesting um, take on that. So fast forward. This is a whole band of characters. And what a lot of audiences didn't understand or take away from this, yeah, we are only focused on ten Eternals. But if you catch what he said, the Eter- the Celestial at the beginning, he's planted seeds in all planets across all the universes. Yeah, there was a lot. That means each, each, each planet has its own ten Eternals. That's why at the end of the movie they said we need to go find the rest of the Eternals. Because there's multiple Eternals out there on planets just living, waiting for that seed to develop yeah. and come forth. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of complex and convoluted. So I wanted to make sure that before we start talking about this, you guys at least understand a little bit of the backstory, origin comic-wise. So, But I can understand how this movie can be so divisive because you have these ten characters that nobody knows about. What are their powers? Mm-hmm. Their powers aren't really talked about until you see their powers right so we don't know what they can do until you see what they can do and then you can like oh well she's fast he does fireballs he does hadouken uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> so but um austin um what what's some of your your thoughts on eternals i don't want to take up too much time talking and yakking yep. yeah no i i i uh i wanted this to be like the next big, huge, amazing Marvel movie because I, I love Chloe Zhao's work. I mean, she's an Oscar-winning director. She's awesome. Marvel's taking a risk by bringing on somebody a little bit more in the independent artistic world, and uh, it was a big risk. Now, the story that she's telling here compared to what she has been doing on this smaller budgeted level is a drastic difference, right? It's a mm-hmm. huge story with a lot of characters, a lot of things. I think the decision for me that disappointed me the most after – thinking about it was the idea of telling this story out of order um, mm. not chronologically because there's a lot of flashbacks there the is movie. a lot of cutbacks yeah there and is. i and i think that's really I, that's one of the biggest criticisms i've seen with the critics is just the fact that it's kind of going back and forth and for me someone who is already like like joe like you are we're already familiar with these characters and icarus and kind of their impact and what a celestial is and how these beings operate so when people say this movie is confusing i don't see it i don't see confusion but i have prior knowledge so that's probably why i don't see it so i can't i can't fault someone for seeing that what hurt me more in my experience was the storytelling as opposed to the story itself it was the flashing back doing it unchronologically you know just a, a, something that we've really not seen in the mcu and then you look at the fact that the story is just a lot darker it's a dark story with adult themes i believe the, the first sex scene and in the a marvel first movie, sex scene the, in a marvel movie yep yeah and and just all these different things that they're bringing in that that people have never really seen before one thing that kind of cracks me up i get it people have always said why doesn't the mcu do something different and now they're doing something different and look at what's happening <laughs> exactly you know what i mean like now they're doing something different it's look catch what's 22 happening. yeah yeah it's just kind of okay but at the same time i understand some of the pushback because the way this story is told is wasn't strategically confusing it's it's told in a way that can and will inevitably and already is confusing audiences so there lies my issues now what i loved about this film was the ambition was the fact that i believe most if not all the characters get a lot of exploration and there's just a lot about them that i resonate with like the character of cersei her rela- uh, relationship with uh icarus you have uh, angelina jolie who i thought maybe would take over the film with star power but she was actually giving a reserved and beautiful performance as thena you have kid harrington who's relegated to this background character but they're really setting him up to be a huge yeah. character in the future it's like yeah, really did. all of these different things and and then for me the two standouts brian tyree henry uh as fastos uh, fastos that character i believe had the most connection because he's really the only one that's not a lone wolf that has the familial connection that you can resonate with and then kumel nanjiani in a movie that's not really all that funny his character is the comedic relief. Yes. And I've seen a bit of device in this, but I loved his character. Yes. I thought he was hilarious. I was laughing every moment he was on screen and me cracking up. So 
I found the right amount of, uh, of humor, the right amount of depth to characters. The only big thing is, you know, comparing it to the DC universe, you know, Chloe Zhao, I said this earlier, her, one of her inspirations she came out and said was Man of Steel. <laughs> A lot of people don't like Man of Steel. I love Man of Steel. I do love Man of Steel. So I'm watching this movie and I'm like, okay, this kind of tone, except a lot of characters, and you get the resolve. And yeah, they do the third act CGI battle, but it's different enough. Now, another complaint that I see, and this is my last point, I promise. But no, another complaint that I've seen is where are the Avengers while all this is going down? My only thing that I can say is everything is happening at the same time. So while the Eternals are battling at the end, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange are going through the multiverse. Wanda and Vision are doing their thing with the town. Uh, Hawkeye's doing his thing in his Hawkeye series. So everything's happening at once, so pretty much everyone's busy. Nick Fury's in space. Captain Marvel's in space. Thor's in space. The Guardians are in space. That big celestial There's also that what-if fight, too, where they brought everybody yeah. to some yeah. weird... Yeah, so it's like plane. everybody's busy, so people are like, where are the... And, and, Part of me really likes the fact that they didn't have to rely on the other Marvel characters in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Separate it. I'm okay with that. They'll connect it eventually, but I like how they kept it separate. So I like a lot of the decisions made. I understand why other people don't. Yeah. That's yeah. where I fall. Yeah. Um, I, I do echo a lot of the things you said, and I do want to hear from Lindsay Badger. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, I I love that we're addressing what the the buzzing rumored complaints are. Um, I feel like overall, it's not a bad movie mm -hmm. at all. I, it was very enjoyable for me, but there is a lot of questions sure. because they don't have enough time to answer all of those questions because mm -hmm. there's so many people that has so many different things going on that it's really difficult to answer all of the little things that would probably connect you a little bit more to all of those personalities. Mm -hmm. They only have time to do that overarching story of who are you where'd you come from why are you here they checked all those boxes so i can't complain that the storytelling was missing because they they hit the major points that they needed to tell um i feel that we would probably enjoy the story more if we had a more deeper connection to these characters like you were saying with uh what's his name fastos mm -hmm. yeah um, I really enjoyed that we got to go into his life Me too. and get to his connection. And I think one of the complaints I also heard was the whole depiction of the gays and all that stuff. But you know what? That didn't even bother me because it wasn't like a whole fairy fest. It was, here's my husband. Here's my kid. We're living life. We're moving on. It was not a big statement. It was just kind of an existence and we moved on. I thought it was going to be a lot worse from what I heard. So, it, it, not well, of course, it everybody's going to amplify you know. it and make it make everybody's anyway, going to make so it sound like that was one of the complaints cool. that was was rumored about this movie. And I'm like, that's not a big thing at all. Um, my husband gets kind of squeamish about that stuff. And so I have to deal with that internally anyways. But he seemed to be fine. <laughs> he lived mm -hmm. anyways, moving on past that um, into the sex scene part you didn't see anything except for shoulders and it was really less than 30 seconds and oh. it was a nice show of that relationship you see worse on the cw developed. yeah you've definitely yeah, seen absolutely. worse on on the cw absolutely. so yeah. i mean even you know Just movies saying. have sex scenes especially if you're trying to show a passionate love story yeah this wasn't where basic they actually instinct. are married and they're like i'm belonging to you and they're committing themselves to each other for literally eternity mm -hmm. <laughs> it's part yeah. of it so i really wasn't bothered by that either i don't think i would take my seven-year-old to go see it just because no. i don't feel like he needs to be introduced to that sort of level of love story at his age but i think that if i took my daughter she wouldn't even care yeah. but you know i mean it's just a different it's a different age level thing that you would have to judge as a parent taking your kids to that but other than that there's nothing else in the movie that yeah. is sexual in nature at all so i yeah. mean there's there's <clears throat> those would be the only weird parts that i thought that was going to be you know something of of concern and it really didn't bother me so yeah yeah i i think um, um overall i'm sorry Lindsay, was you done i'm sorry no, I'm not done. We're going to keep talking all night. Well, I'm going to mute you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. It was just, I wish that, that we were able to, I, I feel like there was just a missing connection. And I think that's where we're having that divisiveness sure. stem from. Yeah. Is that um, all the other MCU characters, we've had that opportunity to build up the 
the backstories a little bit more for each character and, and have those um, emotional attachments to to understand why we are rooting for them. And they don't really explain that clearly just because they're inhuman right. creatures. That's what you did there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the artistic direction of this film was just awesome. I love the yeah, gold. I think it was beautiful. The, like the black marble and the gold. It was just, I mean, whoever came up with the stylized costumes and the overall aesthetic of these these gold steps that would come out of the, the spaceship and man, it was just beautiful to look at and it just felt so different, like otherworldly, something we're not used to. Oh, there was there was one thing that I did notice. No, you're done. Um, so in <laughs> I'm just jo I'm joking. <laughs> Go ahead, let's see. <laughs> um, at the at the end scene, whenever they're doing their final battle on the beach and at the base of the volcano and whatnot, all those characters were like working together to kind of keep Icarus aside and mm. and let them do their thing to uh, to solve the problem. But I noticed there was an absence in Kingo. Where did he go? Did you guys notice that he disappeared? He was yeah. not fighting on the beach. Kingo. Oh yeah, uh, it was when with the with the light pew pew balls. Yeah, he stuff? said he was uh, he couldn't be a part of that battle because Icarus turned, so he said he couldn't do this and left. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Why? That's just part I, of his character. I, mean... I think it was for me. Yeah, I I was missing him a bit, but for me it was I can't be a part of this anymore because I can't fight. Because he, he, he knew he couldn't kill win. His friends. Yeah, and he, well, he had so much trust in Icarus. Then when Icarus broke that trust, Fair he enough. basically said, I, I, I've lived my thousands of years believing one thing, and now I, I can't be a part of this. So I, that didn't bother me as much, but I would have liked to have seen him there. I think yeah. it would have been a more effective battle if he yeah. was part of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. All right. So overall the aesthetic we've talked about the, the visuals the the heavy hitting topics that people were discussing coming out of the theater the divisiveness whatever you will and i think it all boils down to it's a brand new story with brand new characters something we've yeah. never seen before and people aren't used to it and yeah. when people aren't used to it they don't gravitate feels, to it new feels funny new feels mm -hmm. funny and i'm sorry you're going to have to get used to it because the mcu phase four we're still going to get the heavy hitters like Tom Holland and, excuse me, Doctor Strange and all of that, but you're you're going to you're going to start getting these influxes of these yeah, random. Wait, can characters. we talk about this, the reference to the de the the the? Superman? Wasn't that funny? Like I don't. Yeah. <laughs> It's like I don't run around on capes and the DC. Yeah, Icarus. Vibe it was interesting. There. It was that interesting. Was, that was, uh, well, and what? and someone made a someone made a Superman comparison. Someone said you're the Alfred to my Batman. So it's like DC yeah. Comics e exist in Marvel. Like, what? What? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's almost like the Eternals are acknowledging that the DC universe exists. Yeah, it's which is crazy. It's man. insane. Crazy. I, I, I couldn't even wrap my head around that when they were. They didn't do it once. They did it twice. Twice in yeah. the film. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't just an accident. It was ridiculous. Slip. I looked over yeah. at my buddy Steve, and I'm like, did they just say Superman and Batman? He's like, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. But uh, we do want to talk about definitely those two post credit scenes. Um, yes, please. Spoiler heavy. Um, you know, of course, there's a big battle, and we see this amazing climactic ending. I don't want to give too much of the ending away. I think, uh, you know, for me, seeing a celestial approach Earth... I think that's something you need to experience on your own. I agree. Uh, it, it is crazy to see that. Um, but uh, talking about these two post credit scenes, first one was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, is this the one? That's the one I with... I thought they were both pretty interesting. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. The, so the first one is right after the main credits end, we see Pip, the troll. <laughs> And right. I was like, who the hell is this guy? Well, just crazy. I was like, are we switching over to Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Pip the yeah. Troll. I thought first. Pip the Troll has always been tied to Adam Warlock. Anytime mm -hmm. you see Pip the Troll, you always see Adam Warlock. It's almost yeah. like Groot and Rocket. Yeah. yeah. And okay. so if you think about it in that context, uh, so Pip the Troll comes out, a character we've never seen before, and introduces Star Fox brother of thanos yeah walks out and it's harry styles did everybody, <laughs> did everybody know that thanos had a brother first of all because oh, yeah. i was yeah. like eos, you know, he eos. Was? 
Yeah. Uh, Eos. Uh, so the here's the crazy move. thing. Eos doesn't look like Thanos because Thanos has the deviant gene. Mm. That's why Thanos <laughs> is purple. Yeah. So y'all, those um, deviants scared the f out of. He him. has the deviant the gene, time. and it made him purple. And he's and he's got the ball sack chin. But anyway, um, right. yeah, he's got the chin. Yeah. But it's just so weird because I feel that that is a direct reference to Adam Warlock who is coming and already confirmed the actor and everything in Guardians 3 and I feel that we're not we've not seen the end of Star Fox yet um oh, no. he's I think he's going to be more of an antagonist character he's not going to I don't think he's going to have a very major role in films he's going to be kind of like um the collector of sorts oh, uh, I think he'll show up in the third Guardians movie oh absolutely uh, he's going to yes. be, yeah, Pip the Troll, Star Fox, Let's all go. of these heavy hitters are going to definitely be showing up in the in the new Guardians Bring and possibly multiverse that. stuff. We don't yeah. know. There's a reason they were introduced in this film. Uh, hell, we may even see them in Spider-Man for all we know. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't know what to expect in these next upcoming Marvel movies, but that yes, was so... Stay so... tuned for Star Fox... Harry Styles action because you know watermelon sugar was, and all that. It was watermelon so, sugar high, you know. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> I hope what? what is? I was like, you know, I totally forgot that he was even part of this. Yeah. And he walks out, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> totally did not expect. Did not expect that at all. That was uh, all right. so crazy. So bring, the next one. My buddy Mike Kendall over here is like, bring on the Black Knight and Blade. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we're Make talking about so right now, Mike Kendall. The, the end scene credit number two. Mm-hmm. Open um, the box, baby. So it was weird seeing Jon Snow open I up a box. I can't get over the fact that he's Jon Snow. I know. And screaming I, out Cersei. I know. Like, <laughs> I, oh, my God. That was hilarious. <laughs> he was, I was like, opening no. the box. And I just wanted to see the box, you know, have some kind of like Game of Thrones symbology on it. It would have been great. But, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. But anyway. Uh, but he's seeing the blade, the dark blade there. And um, does anybody mm. know what that leads up to? A solo movie? Specifically? Black yeah. <laughs> what, is it, what is that blade? What is that blade? What is the ancestry of that blade? Because he hinted well, at his ancestry in the film. The rumor... Is that he's not only getting his own spinoff, he's getting his own movie mm. as the Black Knight. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm hoping we get to see. Right. And so who was the voice talking to him? You might not want to do that. <laughs> yeah, I did not know that was Blade until I, I... Because it's like, to me, I wish we would have showed him. Because you know how many people are not going to know that's Blade unless they Google it, it at I this just point? loved the dark, tingly sensation that mm. I got when I heard his voice. That's really the only thing that I enjoyed about <laughs> it. <laughs> I was but like, now I don't know that who I, you are, but can you talk some more, please? <laughs> now that I know it's Mahershala Ali, I'm like, oh, the implications of mm. that. Is, that, is that actually the Ebony Blade? It is the Ebony Blade. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. they, re- they referenced Ebony Blade whenever she was playing with Excalibur on the Eternal ship. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, there's so, there's some there's some foreshadowing there. There you go. Yeah, Captain Britain. Yeah, definitely. So the Ebony Blade. So what this this whole convoluted thing is introducing, and it's set up again for another reason, mm-hmm. is the Marvel Dark Verse. The Dark Verse mm-hmm. is Moon Knight, Blade, Morbius, all of the dark vampire. Uh, the Craven the Hunter is included in this ring. Ooh, interesting. Um, God, we didn't even talk about that trailer. And so we have, well, uh, what is it? Uh, Moon Knight. What's his name? Um, Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. Already been, uh, the movie's uh, like it's almost crazy. three quarters of the way done. And, and, and there is a done. there is a rumor going around that Blade will be in that series. Yeah. There is a rumor. Yeah. So you see what they're setting up. They're setting up, mm-hmm. all right, so... He's going to be taking on... Jon Snow will become <laughs> the Dark Knight. The Black Knight. Yeah. And um, so... It, and then we've got this whole Mahershala Ali sitting over on the side. Nobody got it. I, I didn't get it at the... I, didn't, I gotta be honest. I didn't get it at the beginning. If I remember the comics, Black Knight's blade come from the meteor and was crafted from Mar- Merlin. That is correct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you are well, correct. King Arthur era kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. All right. Would it be this... That is that the sword of Excalibur? Still. Or is that Ooh. a different sword? I don't know if that is, but I know it's that Arthurian era because I mean, you look at the Black Knight's costume, 
It looks like he belongs in that era, but well, I love it. I love how that could be so yeah. different. See, Jeremy, I, I believe they're two different blades because um, um, Athena was holding a Scalibur, and they asked her if it was the mm. ebony blade, and she True. said, "No, it's a Scalibur." So they're yeah. two different blades. Oh, Jeremy, catch. Jeremy is over here stealing my thunder at the moment because I was talking about the MCU Dark Verse, Moon Knight, Werewolf hardcore. by Night, which is a character. The Dark Hold and Ghost Rider are all included in this oh, new Ghost Dark Rider. Verse. Uh, so you're talking about souls, damnation, the, the, you know, the soul that never sleeps, the vampire, uh, wow. you're talking about all of that. And Jared just, Leto. Jared Leto. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so that it's, trailer though, that trailer yeah. though, what in the MCU, so good. um, yeah, right? but as so you can good. see the, the, the Eternals, whether you were divisive or not about the movie, it left us with so much goodness in the end as well, setting yeah. up so much more in the mcu and man it makes me so excited just to to know what is coming down the pipeline three four years from now uh thoughts on that guys what do you what do you guys think about these i i think it's gonna be a fun dark road that's gonna scare the pants off of me but it'll be good yeah i think it's gonna be good I love the idea of them kind of going back to what Netflix was doing and speak of the devil some of those characters as well uh but just make appeal to a different audience mm. if you will a, a darker more what you think of when you think that early 2000s blade those movies captured something so specific so if oh, they can yeah. get back to that you don't even have to do r-rated but if you want to that'd be great but something so specific that we've not seen in the mcu and i think the closest we've seen in the mcu was eternal so it makes mm. sense that it's kind of coming from i that. have a what if question eternals related for you boys sure Ooh. give it what if instead of having it be a movie, they did a series for the Eternals instead? And how do you think that would be received? Better. I think mm. that they would be able to stretch that storyline out and dive deeper into the characters and their relationships over a longer period of time. But and it would definitely, I think, be able to educate a little bit better, um, connect a little better. With that comes budget restrictions, and I think that's the only thing. This was such a grand story. It's it's hard to show that. I mean, the scene with the Celestial and Cersei just floating up to him. I don't know if you could do that but on I a mean, TV budget. But I mean, look at like WandaVision. It's Hello. great. It, it's you know? great, I mean, but they, it's they've not. They've got all that stuff that they can play with, though. Maybe Disney Plus would allow, but it would it would be it would be hard for Disney Plus to give him that big of a budget, but. I think they could work around it. Like you said, tell more story, which yeah. would have helped this movie. For yeah. sure. I think so. It would sure. be cool, though, if they, if they expanded, when it says the Eternals will return, it would be cool if they expanded that into like a 10-part series, though, on yeah. Disney+. Plus. And more. it kind of fleshed yeah. it out, you know, maybe each episode. I think episode. it's a cool universe that has a lot of different it directions it can go. And I just, I really feel like it didn't get its full justice served with this flip. you know it would be yeah. good though because it would allow people in the comfort of their own homes to sit mm -hmm. and watch privately and soak it in and understand uh, all the characters and all the dynamics and that's a really good point Lindsay. you make a good point about that and um we don't know where it's going to go we don't know what marvel and kevin feige have planned for us but we shall see yep. but with all of that said let's go ahead and rate this and wrap this up we're 15 minutes over uh so uh lindsey badger what's your score for eternals i'm gonna do 75 75 percent Austin Burke. 76%. 76%. I am going to go with a 79%. Oh, yeah, so we I like got, it. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of, that was the number I had in the head coming out of the theater. I'm like, it's not fully an 80, but it's mm -hmm. uh, really high end on the 70. So I'm going to go 79%. So we have 75, 76, 79. Nice. That is the official Pop X score for The Eternals. It is definitely a go. certified fresh film. We kind of give it a thumbs up. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's one that you do need to see, and it's definitely a huge stepping stone in things to come in terms of the Marvel I Cinematic I would say universe. if you're a Marvel fan, you're required to see this. Yes, you, you kind of have to, especially <laughs> sure. even if you don't if enjoy the if film. If you're trying to continue and follow with the MCU, watch the dang thing. That's yeah. right. <laughs> a lot. Are you guys ready to wrap this up? Absolutely. All right, Austin. Sad hey, has that, has that Spider-Man trailer thing dropped yet? <laughs> Hey, there is a poster. It has dropped. Um, it's 
It's We're, all over Twitter. Joe, check your text. I just sent it yeah, to you. Josh just said uh, in the chat that it dropped right now. So <gasps> is this the official right poster? Now. This is the official Spider-Man poster. And if you do some zooms, you can see Green Goblin, Electro's Ooh. Lightning, Sandman Sand, and of course, the Dr. Octopus tentacles. I don't know if you guys can get a good. This is about as good as it's going to get on this screen. But if you just want to go oh over to Twitter uh, or Google or basically anyone right now, I probably am going to do a video after we wrap up today. Sounds great. Poster. So I might I might cover this. Like, that's there we go. Pretty sweet, man. I, I, I love that. I love that. That's pretty good. That's the official poster, huh? It's the official sweet. poster. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go. All Very right. Cool. Look at that breaking news right here on, uh, yeah. on PopX. Austin, go ahead and lead us out here, man. Let's go. All right, guys. I'm Austin Burke at The Burkinator. You can search and find me. We are part of the created, uh, the newly formed creative group known as the Creative Multiverse for more great media content, artwork, and more. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Creative Multiverse. If you are a creative, produce content, or have a talent, we want to see it and would like for you guys to share it with us in the multi. Oh, it's a cool flesh. place to hang out you guys should check it out it's I great like it. i like it a all lot. right guys well i am Lindsay badger um you can find me anywhere on the internet at lr badger if you want to connect with pop x cast on social media you can find us on facebook instagram tumblr twitter everywhere that handle is at pop x cast if you want to shoot us an email at any time uh pop x cast at gmail.com and for mm -hmm this show any future shows any past shows anything that has to do with the show <laughs> pretty much <laughs> check out our official website www.popxcast.com and before we go guys i am going to go ahead and show you that poster right now here in hd so oh, yeah. there is the brand new spider-man poster literally released yeah. while we were on the air here uh eggs. look at all the easter eggs the the yes. yellow lightning of jamie fox the sandman you got dr octopus you've got uh, the green goblin oh, oh my gosh bro oh, what is goodness. going on wow Ooh, yeah. oh, all right nice. All right, guys. Uh, so I am Joseph Burke at Joseph Burke Arts all over social media. Of course, hats off to the amazing Team Pop X, Lindsay and Austin. Could not do this without you and you, the viewers, subscribers, and audiences of Pop X Cast. We love you and we thank you. And guess what? We'll be back in two weeks for episode 134 as we break down Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. It is that season. Ghostbusters, who you going to call? Go. You guys ready to wrap this thing up? I think so. It. Let's do it. Take care. We'll see you next time on Bye, Pop everybody. X Cast. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 From everyone at Pop X Cast. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification bell so you know when we go live next. Drop us an email, popxcast at gmail.com. Throw us up a like on Instagram and all those other social media outlets. At popxcast. Until next time.